The time has finally come in our course to discuss the element of sex that intrigues many people the most, intercourse. Sexual intercourse is sometimes referred to as copulation or coitus. Although the term sexual intercourse has come to mean a variety of acts, the term coitus, which is Latin for joining together, traditionally refers to penile vaginal penetration and is normally the fundamental first step in making babies. So in this video, you'll explore the physical and physiological elements of sexual intercourse. Specifically, you'll learn about the male and female sexual responses. But first, a bit of history. You might be surprised to hear this, but prior to the 1950s, very little was known about sexual intercourse. Sure, the mechanisms of sex were well understood, but very little was actually known about the physiology of intercourse. Repressive attitudes towards sex and a fear of professional sanctions meant that very few people carried out scientific research on sex. However, ever since the 1960s, research into human sexual physiology has become an accepted and very important part of the study of reproduction. And there are two very important people to thank for this. These people are William H. Masters and Virginia E. Johnson, better known simply as Masters and Johnson. And this dynamic duo pioneered research into the nature of human sexual response in the 1960s and 70s. They also investigated the diagnosis and treatment of many sexual disorders and dysfunctions. What was different about Masters and Johnson was that they didn't just interview people about sex as earlier researchers had done. Instead, they directly observed and measured more than 10,000 sexual acts by nearly 700 volunteer men and women in their laboratory. This was groundbreaking to say the least and pretty controversial stuff, but it generated some of the first laboratory data on the anatomy and physiology of the human sexual response. And it dispelled many long-standing misconceptions about sexual intercourse. If you'd like to read more about Masters and Johnson's work, I've provided links below this video to some of their most well-known publications, including Human Sexual Response and Human Sexual Inadequacy, which were published in 1966 and 1970 respectively. So here's a fun fact for you. The television drama series Masters of Sex, which aired from 2013 to 2016, tells the story of Masters and Johnson, who were in fact a married couple for 21 years, from 1971 to 1992. So from their studies on human sexual interaction, Masters and Johnson propose that sexual intercourse could be divided into four different phases. Excitement, plateau, orgasm and resolution. Simply put, this model explains how the human body changes during sexual stimulation. The excitement, or E phase, is the first stage and occurs when physical or mental stimuli raise sexual arousal. In the second phase, or the plateau or P phase, this arousal becomes intensified. There is increased circulation and heart rate and breathing is elevated. The orgasm, or the O phase, is short, but characterised by a sense of intensive pleasure. In both males and females, there are quick cycles of muscle contraction in the lower pelvic muscles. And in males, this phase is also usually associated with ejaculation. During the final resolution, or R phase, muscles relax and blood pressure drops to its pre-excitement level. In men only, Masters and Johnson also found that a refractory period occurs after orgasm, during which time sexual rearousal and orgasm are not possible. In women, however, no such refractory period generally occurs. Sure, it can be difficult to tell precisely when one phase ends and the next begins because real life sex is a much more seamless process. But the beauty of Master and Johnson's model is that it does simplify a relatively complex physiological experience into a simple to understand process that most people can relate to. This is why their model is still relevant and in use some 40 years after it was developed. Next, you'll be able to explore an interactive that demonstrates Masters and Johnson's sexual response model in action. 
Use this interactive to compare and explore the four phases of the human sexual response in males and females. And if you're interested to learn about alternative models of human sexual response that have more recently been developed, I've provided some useful links to these after this video. However, I will stress that Master and Johnson's original model remains the most widely known and referenced model, so you will explore it in much more detail during this course.